Hey everybody, thanks for coming to watch my video today. And today we're talking about lock cylinders. In particular, this one's for my 1986 300ZX. Similar ones from 1984 to 1989. Um, today we're looking at it because they're getting kind of sloppy in their old age. Keys don't exactly fit super tight anymore. And even though this one works good, when you want to set up chip keys, it makes it kind of complicated when it doesn't work very great. And nobody likes a sloppy lock cylinder. So, I found this one here off of eBay. Fits for a 1986 era Maxima, or also the S12 generation of 200SX. And this guy seems like it's a pretty close match. So as far as disassembly goes on the factory lock cylinder, you've got a roll pin here, one here, I've had this one apart already. And it should just kind of slide apart. One thing to watch for though, is there is a spring right here. So if you don't catch that, it's going to pop out and you're probably going to lose it. Best not to do that. Once that's out, you can set that aside. And we can have a bit of a closer look at the actual lock cylinder assembly. So, once we get the 300ZX one apart, we can see there's actually a lot of similarities to the Maxima one. The main things we're looking for is the positions of the locating pins, which is the same, as well as the guides for clocking it into the housing. There are differences here and here for where the retainer goes and also the lever for the key and lock switch, but that we'll deal with later. The other thing we'll notice is all the positions are similar. So in reality, the only difference that we really got is the lever positioning and length and the overall length of the unit. That's not so bad. That's pretty easy to deal with. If we take our digital calipers, everybody's favorite, we'll notice that overall length of this unit here is about 27.83 or let's say 28 millimeters and conveniently that just happens to line up with this step in the casting here on the 200SX one. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to end up cutting it shorter just to match up with the 300ZX one. Should be easy enough and we'll move on from there. Now in this case I did actually start before taking the video, then I decided that taking a video is probably a bit of a better option than just taking a bunch of pictures and hoping everybody can follow along. This way seemed easier. So with all that cutting done, just like that, we'll find that it's going to almost fit in here, but you can't quite get it in all the way. Main reason that we're going to find that's going to happen is because there is a couple millimeters difference here right at the end of the barrel so we're just gonna have to knock that down a little bit and there's also this little step here and that guy there is about 26 millimeters so we'll just get that taken care of real quick and we'll be right back So, to carry on from the old one, we need to create this little step, which, by measuring, is about 1.6 or so millimeters. It's not going to pose a huge relevance as far as operation of the lock cylinder, but we don't want to get too sloppy with it, otherwise we're not going to be any better than when we left off. That's mostly there to provide the stops, so that way you can't overturn the lock cylinder as you turn it through its cycle. So, with that, I went and I just put some permanent marker on here. It turns out the original Maxima one does have a similar pattern to it on the end. So it does actually continue down a little bit past here. It might not be the worst thought to make this cut first instead of doing the longitudinal one second. But with that, I'm just going to mark it.
kind of like that you can kind of see what I've done there and just trim it down much like I need to we'll be back in a second okay so with this pit taken off obviously a lot more closely resembling the original unit it's going to take a little bit of time to clean up these rough edges of course as well as to fine-tune the total length of these guys so that way it'll end up sitting a lot more flush into the original lock barrel because as it is this guy's pretty close but there is still a tiny bit of a gap and filing these guys down just that little bit that's going to get us that perfect fit that we're looking for as it is though i imagine this one would probably do just fine So all we're going to do here, I just have a cheap little Harbor Freight Princess Auto file set. Doesn't take anything too fancy to get stuff like this done. And this one's kind of just a almond profile. Again, not that it really matters. So this guy filed up, we're just going to, a little bit of good old paper towel, never hurt nobody. And we're just going to clean out some of those shavings so that we can do a bit of a test fit. So, there we go, my edges are nice and clean, which is what we want to see. Now, we're going to take the original lock barrel out of the Z31 one. One thing I suppose I should note. The new one did come with a new lock barrel, but as you can see, it's a lot different shape. The tumblers in it are still the same style, but obviously the barrel itself isn't going to work too good. This piece on the end, though, we're going to end up using, just because the Z31 one is a lot sloppier. And, uh, obviously sloppy is not good. So, fits in pretty decent. Total overall end height seems like it's alright. Doesn't turn in there like it's supposed to. And with the key. Turns pretty good. A little hard to keep it together in my hands though. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so. Moving on to the next part, lock cylinders. As I'm sure you noticed with the one I was working with there, it was a little hard to turn into the tumbler. This guy here, even though it's all new and fresh. Good reason for that, and I found this with a couple of these keys. I don't know if it's just my luck or if it's the way that they happen to be for the time. But you'll see, if this would focus, some of these tumblers, even though this is the key that came with this cylinder, just don't quite match up. Now they are able to spring out of the way, which is why it still worked in my scarred up original one. Not sure if you can really see much there. There we go. So being all scarred up like that, especially on this side here, it let this misshapen, miskeyed old cylinder work just fine, even though it wasn't. So barring that, we have this one here keyed up much better and of course for reference the brand new one which of course is pretty much perfect too bad we can't use it so with this guy here as our reference for a new one turns just like butter and of course just because we want to make sure obviously doesn't work with the wrong key which is always a good plus don't want anybody getting in there if they can so with that said and done the only other thing that we really have to tackle which honestly is kind of a minor thing but it's still important is the key and lock chime as I noted earlier, the positioning of these items was a little different, and these guys correlate 
to this little unit here. So this will end up sitting into the housing like so. And that little part down in the bottom there, the little horn that sits on the end here, is pushed up when you insert the key into the lock. That's what this little slot here is for. When you push that in, it pushes the contact on this little switch here, which sits in the side. Kind of like so. Ah, if I could get it to work on camera, that would be great. There we go. So that guy sits in there kind of like so. And as you can kind of see as I'm moving it there, when you put the key in, it closes the switch, and that's what makes your door lock chime when you're sitting in there with the door open. So all we're going to do is drill a new hole to match this guy here, just a bit farther down, and cut a slot here for the pin on the little fulcrum there. Easy enough. Let's get her done. All right, so for this guy here, it just so happens that a 3 16 bit is about the perfect size. But we have kind of a slot here, so it's not like we can center punch anything to really start with. By the way, I shaved off these other two nubs here, so that way it was a bit easier to get the drill started. And the point that we need to get into is about 5.3 millimeters in. So I kind of just scribed a line across here and I took the pointed end of my file just to provide a little bit of a start here just in the peak of the line so that way I can use a smaller drill bit like this guy here to kind of get it started and that way it'll be a lot easier to drill the larger hole. All right so for those of you playing at home just as a recap we've got about 5.3, 5.25 or so to the middle of this guy here and to the middle of the other one, this pin here that levers on, we are looking at right around 15.9 or so, 16 millimeters. So on this guy here, I got that one drilled out. Uh, it's a bit tricky. Definitely start with a smaller drill bit. If you can put it into a vise or something to hold it, definitely would recommend that. Less chance of you drilling into your fingers, which nobody wants. Now for this guy here, on the lever pin, since I don't have access to tools that'll easily cut the little channel that it sat in, similar to the factory one, what I did instead is I drilled down at the similar height to what the depth is on this factory one here. So that way, once this guy is inserted in here, much like so, I can take the roll pin that would have been in there, and it can be pressed in in order to provide a levering point for this guy. So, with that said, there is only one other thing that's really stopping us. I'm not sure what the maximum one looks like on the inside of its ignition barrel, but there is this little bit here of metal which we're going to have to get rid of because on the Z31 it's not there and it's kind of important because the little arm that actuates the key in cylinder chime kind of sits right down in there so we're going to have to get that taken care of easy enough it's only going to take a couple of seconds to cut that out you could probably even use wire snips if you had to be right back Okay, so I got that little bit there cleared out. Took a little bit of filing work afterwards to kind of clean it up good enough. And I also had to smooth out this little bit right here. You can kind of see. I had to chamfer that edge a little bit just because this guy here is having a hard time catching on it. So now with all that said and done, I'm pretty much ready for assembly. One thing to note here is I ended up putting this hole too far down to the actual body of the barrel and that kind of gave me a lot of grief. I had to modify 
this little bracket here, shaving that down, shaving this guy down, bending that, in order to make it work well enough that it'll actually be reliable. Um, on this guy here, the factory lock barrel, we are looking at about 3.7 millimeters in height there. So it does end up being pretty close to what I had drilled it out to, but obviously me drilling it out didn't allow it the same kind of movement that we would have been looking for. That said, I was able to get this taken care of. Like I said, I had to file up over here, so that way this would not catch on the lock opening of the cylinder here. I also had to file a little bit here, and then I had to adjust this here. So this part here actually holds on to the steering column lock. So you can see there's a little tab there as it scrolls in. So the point of that one is after this opens it up and you turn it back to lock, it'll remain unlocked until you pull the key out of the ignition. But all that said and done, pretty much ready for reassembly. So reassembly is pretty straightforward. There's a little front plate there. We're using the original Z31 lock barrel. If you're rekeying it, this would be obviously premium time to do that. We're not going to really worry about that in this video because I've already done that on this one. So that guy there, insert that into our housing, followed by this guy here. Don't drop your stuff on the floor. There we go. So that's in there now. You're going to need quite a bit of movement on this. And before we go putting it all back together, one thing you'll want to check, just in case you run into the same problem me of putting that hole too low, put your key in and just make sure that it's able to turn. Apply a little bit of pressure on the black area here up at the front, just to make sure that you're still able to turn the ignition, because it'd be an awful time if you couldn't go through all this work. So, once that's said and done, line up the slot in the bottom and up in the top, and get it partially inserted so you can insert the spring. Push that guy down, hold it down a little bit, push your lock cylinder together. Uh, you'll notice that I forgot to put this guy in right here. Uh, normally there's wires attached to this, but obviously as you can see mine's not quite as good. But for the sake of the video, we'll put it in anyway. So for this guy here, this little ear has to go into the slot. You can kind of see it there on that guy. And then there's a little groove that it sits in just over in here. And we'll just go back to slotting this guy together in here. Get your slots lined up, make sure this guy's not out of the way. In my case, because of the adjustments I made, sometimes pushing this down will help get it in. There we go. That is pretty much assembled. Give her a test go. And that is a lot better. And you'll notice when I take the key out, that that guy pops back out. So that is due to the adjustments that I had to make on the back of that arm, which is this guy here. So because of mine, me putting that hole too far down low, I had to bend this part up a little bit. I had to mess it a little bit, as well as file this guy in order to get it to clear everything properly. But a little bit of file work here and there, and you can get it dialed in pretty good and working pretty reliably.
And then we'll just put it over into the cylinder that I actually meant to put it into. Looks like in the case of this barrel, I'll have to do a little bit more filing and whatnot to get that perfect, perfect fit that I'm hoping for. Never mind, just like that. And in the case of mine, I've got some 3D printed adapters and whatnot. Now, obviously this isn't gonna be standard for most guys, but I like to live a little bit more complicated, it seems. And of course, should be putting those roll pins back in, but I'm not totally sure that I'm done with this one just yet. And there you have it. One pretty fresh ignition lock cylinder. Thanks for watching.